then I'm going to ask you about babies who who out of this group likes babies to start off with you <laughs> you all like them do you I just think they're, they're really nice they always say what they think and that's what I like about them they're, they, they're just really nice <laughs> <laughs> uh, they're, um, they're really cute and they make you laugh at some of the things they do and the way they act and that. I like babies because they take my words off and I don't mind you know, in, in, in the story about Christmas, Jesus was lying in, in the crib and he always looked like a very good baby. Do you, what do you all think about that baby? Do you think that was a good baby or a different type of baby or what? I think he always did naughty things only once. And <laughs> it must have been funny to watch him doing the naughty things. Really? <laughs>
I'm going to tell you a story. Once upon a time, in an old monastery set in a hillside covered with vines, there lived a monk. His name was Brother Heinrich. Now the monastery was famous for its wine. Brother Heinrich didn't work in the vineyard. His job was in a little cobbled courtyard at the back of the monastery, where he worked all alone. Except, that is, for his friend Sigismund. Sigismund was the donkey who worked the wine press. All day long he would walk round and round, pulling the long wooden arm which turned the press and crushed the grapes. It was boring, really, living in the little backyard, but it was peaceful. Brother Heinrich liked to talk to Sigismund, and Sigismund liked to listen. Sometimes he would answer in a friendly sort of way. Brother Heinrich talked about all sorts of things. How to eat wine jelly without it falling off your spoon. How to stop mice biting your toes when you've got sandals on. But most of all, he liked to talk about music. In fact, he was so good at music that he was in charge of the monastery choir. So every day, when work was done, he would take Sigismund back to his stable, give him some hay, wish him good night, and hurry off to choir practice. But some nights, when Sigismund seemed especially sad at being left out, he would let him come along and sing in the choir. He even lent him an old pair of specs so that he could read better. Sigismund felt very important. He joined in all the songs, though sometimes his voice did stand out a bit. One day, Brother Heinrich and Sigismund were working as usual at the wine press when one of the brothers came running up. Brother Heinrich, he panted, the abbot wants to see you immediately. Brother Heinrich groaned. When the abbot wanted to see people, it usually meant trouble. Oh, what does he want, Brother Joseph? asked Brother Heinrich. I don't know, answered Brother Joseph, but you'd better hurry. There was the abbot sitting at his desk, reading a long and important looking letter. Brother Heinrich, he began, I've just received this letter from the Archbishop. He'll be travelling this way on important business at Christmas time, and he'd like to come in person to our Christmas morning service and Christmas dinner afterwards. You must make sure that the choir sings better than it has ever sung before. Oh, I'll do my best, promised Brother Heinrich. And one more thing, said the abbot, that ridiculous donkey must be dismissed from the choir. Whatever will the Archbishop think? Besides, it can only sing two notes. That donkey must go. Brother Heinrich felt very sad as he walked back to the little courtyard. How could he break the bad news? He cleared his throat. <coughs> Sigismund, the Archbishop is coming to our Christmas morning service, he began. But, um, but I, I, I'm afraid the abbot says you can't sing in the choir anymore. Sigismund just carried on walking round and round. <sighs> oh well, he thought to himself. Oh well. His ears drooped. Oh, don't be sad, said Brother Heinrich. I'll tell you how the rehearsals go. And